moved in today's market, 10 million krona is 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 sort of like uh, almost the minimum that you need to have to create a business. Business. It sounds like a lot of money, but but you have to understand that uh, the business that we are in is extremely regulated and is extremely costly to set up. So just to have a sort of a viable business, you have to start with at least 10 million. Some would say there is a playbook and uh, it, I understood one thing that uh, I could either spend a lot of time raising capital, raising money, or I could create value. So, uh, so for us, we took, uh, we took, okay, we have this amount of money and we have to get most out of it. So we bootstrapped, bootstrapped to a certain point, said, okay, we got regulated, we built our first MVP, we made our first sales, we bought our first apartment, etc. So all those things we did on a bootstrap. Once we had that, we were able to show with limited resources, with scarcity, and with only two people on board, we were able to create this interest and actually have people trust us. If we can do that with 20 people, we can do that for 200 people. And if we could do it for 200 people, we can do it for 200,000 perhaps. There is no shame in copying stuff. Uh, it's, it's about, you know, when Google started, there were at least 20 other startups in the late 90s working on search engines. So it's not about uh, creating the first search engine, it was about creating the best search engine. So for, for me, it was, yeah, well, there are others, but this is a very new segment. This is a very new business area. Uh, most companies only have one or two years head start. And if we work hard enough, uh, we'll be able to, to make it and compete with them. If you're not creating value for customers, you will go out of business. Uh, so, so I guess that's about, and, and uh, you can have a small shop and be creating value for your customers. That's one thing. And then you can create a scalable platform or a business. Then you can have a larger impact and create and make a transformation of an industry. That would be ideal. But uh, who knows? Uh, that's what we're aiming for. Gamran and I were, were uh, you know, high-performing team. Uh, being two, we, we look back at those times as, as good times because we were, you know, we were doing stuff and we were getting things done. And getting shit done is what it's, what it's about. And uh, not that we're not getting shit done now, but uh, being 10, 15 people is different uh, than being two guys and just saying, okay, now we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this. What we were planning at that point, and it's very easy today to, it could be very, very simple as just Trello, Asana, whatever, uh, a, a, a project management tool. But uh, having those, because another thing that worked for us was having a very strict focus on one or two things at a time. So if we're doing sales, we're only doing sales. If we're doing tech, we're only doing tech. Because being a small team, if you're doing everything at once, you're not doing anything. Reasons for, for, for early startups to, to uh, not be successful, I would say, uh, is that they don't come to market quickly enough. They don't test and they don't go methodically about, about testing their business uh, and get out there to talk to customers and sell the solution. So, so, so th I would say that's, a, that's a, one of the reasons because uh, uh, all the rest of the stuff, like money, co-founders, team, etc., that will be solved if you have customers. If I had to build Brickshare from scratch again, I could uh, reach the point where we are in six months. So one and a half year could be boiled down to six months. Why or how? How and what why? Because I know what to do and what and what order. 90% uh, of the time you spend in the early days is actually exploring. Uh, so, so you can cut that out and just execute. But so, 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 so basically, but the, the reason, the problem is you have to explore because it's, it's uncharted grounds. There are a lot of learnings like we thought our customers would be this segment, this persona, and they happen to be somebody completely else. 
uh, we there were a lot of some surprises on the on, on, on our, okay how do we structure our product what are you know trust elements that we need to have we we're actually working with a financial product uh, so there are a lot of things that you learn in the way but the the regulatory part is extremely extremely heavy my background from Deske Bank has proven and my technical background as well has proven quite handy because I was um, able to manage that but doing it all over again I would have had a lawyer as a co-founder as well if I had to start over and set a team I would uh, really think about okay the composition of the team uh, uh, but but uh, I know we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Kamran and me uh, where we are right now um, and uh, if, it, if we have a lawyer on board or, or a legal a compliance guy on board, it, it, he she really had to needs to understand the growth mentality of working. Uh, because as a small nimble startup, you can work, uh, I wouldn't say in the gray areas, but you can work in, in areas of the law that, uh, that uh, is easier for a small company to do. If you have a professional investor that has done this 75 times before, they are pretty cool with you. They have seen all odd cases and that sort of stuff and they are pretty relaxed and know the, how to, you know, how it is to be a founder. So they understand you somehow. Um, it, so, so there's a balance on being, being hands-on, giving soft advice to being hands-on and giving hard advice. So, uh, if you come across uh, an angel or investor that is uh, giving you hard advice and, and, and being, that's toxic for your business. So, uh, really, you know, the investor should understand this is your project, this is you, this is your life on the line, this is uh, you doing it and the reason they're investing, they're investing in you. So you have to you know, make decisions, take in advice, understand, you know, make quick decisions. So I would say that that would be an advice as well. Picking your advices or your, your investors wisely. If not, don't take the money. Uh, there is always a lot of uncertainties and surprises depending on which kind of investor you are talking to. So, so uh, the surprises were like um, a lot of uh, business angels, I would say they're not very professional and don't understand VC mindset. And actually I would say a lot of startups uh, get killed because they don't have professional investors in board that really understand uh, what you have to do and the issues with a high growth mentality. So. You might be a successful businessman, but that doesn't make you an expert on startups. So that's, I guess, one issue with the, with the investors that they really need to understand, okay, how can you create a, a VC case? Today it's extremely cost efficient to build technology and you don't have to build the nice and fancy setup you actually don't even need a technical co-founder to do that. It would be good, but uh, you you can you can build technology that is an MVP. Uh, so so I would say just build and sell. Always sell before you build. So I would uh, the, uh, the hard advice would be actually uh, run you know read lean startup and uh, and focus on building the MVP and selling it. The second advice I would I would uh, give is uh, how, uh, execute. You know, uh, always always think about iterating and experimenting, and keep doing it. You will know that nine out of ten things will fail. You try will fail, but the the chances of success will be higher, and that will be almost hundred percent if you work hard enough. So, so, uh, so, uh, so you have to really persevere and have the grit to really say, okay, this is, I'm, I'm going to make this happen and not be too fixated uh, about solutions or 
small stuff, nitty gritty stuff, etc. Just build, and then uh, say okay, and and not have, not be afraid of what the customers would do, think or whatever. You don't have, and, and I would say a lot of early stage startups lack the selling part. So the third advice would be focus on sales, focus on on marketing and sales, creating trust, building relations early, very early. And one thing which was instrumental for us uh, was actually getting an advisory board on board. So having advisors, you may get 10 good advisors, but one or two of them will prove eventually to be instrumental. If you are, have no experience in, in founding a business uh, in that specific area, understand, but tapping into knowledge, their knowledge would be. So, so if I look back, there are a few advisors that have been instrumental for our success. One thing I've learned in the startup, you have to cherish every success, even though it's very small, because otherwise it's difficult to keep spirits high. So, uh, so whenever there is a great you know, achievement, milestone, we celebrate. Uh, it could be just a shawarma or, or whatever, a Coke, or, 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 but you have to celebrate. 